I have something brand new to show you today. It's the just announced Lens Baby Obscura. It may look like a lens, but it's not. Intrigued? I have been lucky to have been using one of the three Obscura options for the last few weeks. So today I will share what this is, what I think of it, my results, and some tips for using this unusual piece of gear. If you are new here, hello, my name is Lee. I share videos every week on anything where you might have a camera in your hand. Sometimes it's reviews of photo gear, sometimes it's photography technique, sometimes it's travel and the outdoors. If that sounds interesting to you, subscribe. So I said this Lens Baby Obscura looks like a lens, but it isn't. Let's start there. The press materials that I received from Lens Baby give me a definition of camera obscura. It says, a darkened enclosure having an aperture through which light from external objects enters to form an image of the objects on the opposite surface. You may have heard that term before, or maybe the term pinhole camera. That's sort of what this is, but with a modern twist. Lens Baby is turning your camera body into a camera obscura or a pinhole camera with this lens. Let's pause here. Lens Baby actually announced three options today. I have this standalone option on my SL2. It is a 16 millimeter pancake lens for lack of a better term. I'm just gonna call it a lens for the rest of this video. This is available in a variety of mounts. I will put them all up on the screen right now. And then there is a 50 millimeter version for the mounts listed on the screen. And Lens Baby also introduced an Obscura optic for their optic swap system. That optic is 50 millimeters. And again, there are a number of mounts you can purchase for that optic swap system. I'll be discussing my 16 millimeter pancake option here in this video, but know that the other options work in much the same way. All right, what is this really? It behaves like a camera obscura or a pinhole camera, but there are three different configurations of pinholes with a piece of glass over them to protect your camera sensor as well as the pinholes. And that glass is coated to minimize reflections. It's totally lens baby. It's a little bit of vintage and a little bit of modern. <laughs> anyway, you'll see three apertures listed on the lens, F90, F45, and F22. I know, very small apertures. We'll get back to how that works in practice, but you turn the inner ring here to switch among them. But it's not just the size of the pinhole that is different about the three options. At F90, you have a pinhole, one round hole. At F45, you have a pinhole sieve, which is one pinhole with smaller pinholes radiating out of it. And then at F22, you have a zone plate, which is a pinhole with rings around it. By the way, the 50 millimeter versions of the Obscura have different apertures, but the same configurations. Okay, let's look at some examples to see how those configurations actually affect your image. This is the F90 pinhole position. Remember, that's just one very small pinhole. You can see overall that the image is glowy and the focus is even across the frame. We'll come back to focus in a moment. And this was captured with the F45 pinhole sieve. Remember, it is one pinhole with smaller and smaller pinholes radiating out from it. You see a sharper underlying image surrounded by glow and Zooming into the highlights is where you can really see the effect of the configuration of pinholes. Last, this was captured with the F22 zone plate. Again, a sharper underlying image surrounded by glow. And then looking at the highlights, you can actually see the concentric circles. The configurations of all of these do have an effect on the image as a whole, but you can see it the most clearly in the highlights. So let's take a look at the three next to each other. And zooming into the highlights, it's so interesting, isn't it? They each have their own old world fantasy-like look. Experimenting with the three settings in different environments will help you achieve a distinctive look to your photos. I said that we would come back to focus and you may have noticed when I showed you this lens that there's no focus ring. That's because you don't need one. There is no focusing. In the pinhole position, everything is equally in focus. And then in the pinhole sieve and zone plate positions, as long as your subject is a foot away from the lens, you have everything in focus. That being said, the zone plate option at F22 does have a curved field of focus, so you have a sweet spot in the middle of the frame. But 
like I said, beyond a foot from you, you're good to go. Now let's pause again. Some of you out there might be horrified. <laughs> no focusing, no edge to edge clarity, vignetting, what? <laughs> I know it's wild. You aren't going to see that crisp look that you might be used to with traditional lenses, but each of the configurations provide a unique look. The point isn't for your photos to look like everyone else's. The point is for you to experiment and create your art. I do have some tips for you to get started on the right foot with this guy. You can use it in any number of different ways. Like I said, that's kind of the point here. But if you are like I was a bit intimidated, these are my thoughts on beginning your journey. First, let's address the first thing that I thought of when I took a look at these apertures. That's not a lot of room for light to get to the sensor. So yes, you do need to use a slower shutter speed and or a higher ISO sensitivity or a tripod, or if you have it, you can lean on in-body image stabilization. The thing is, this version of the lens is 16 millimeters, so you really don't need a very fast shutter speed. The rule of thumb is as long as your subject is still, you can shoot handheld at the inverse of your focal length. In this case, that would be 1 16th of a second. And the in-body image stabilization of many cameras, like the Leica SL2 I was using, allow you to slow that shutter speed down even more. And there's always a tripod, which I did make use of in some photos. Remember, of course, that even if you are using a tripod so your camera isn't moving at all, you might experience motion blur if your subject is moving, but that's where you would crank up that ISO sensitivity and embrace the grain, or you can embrace that motion blur. <laughs> Maybe use a slower shutter speed intentionally on a moving subject or move your camera while the shutter's open. You could end up with interesting effects, maybe even abstractions. On a related note, one thing to keep in mind is that because your aperture is so small, there is a possibility that your camera's meter won't be accurate. So take test shots and review them. Use your eyeballs. <laughs> there may be a little bit of a learning curve there. On my first outing with this lens, I ended up sometimes taking a few shots at different shutter speeds and ISO sensitivities. Then when I got back to my computer at my desk, I was able to see what worked and what didn't for the effect that I was after. And what's more, rather than be overly concerned with achieving the proper exposure, I encourage you to take photos that you like the look of especially when you're using a lens like this, where you aren't striving for a technically perfect image, let your preferences be your guide. It's a world of discovery out there when you've got this on your camera. One more tip, keep your sensor as clean as possible. I mean, at these apertures, your depth of field is so deep that you are bound to see something on your image. It's the name of the game. Cleaning your sensor is helpful, Quick public service announcement though, make sure that you know how to properly and safely clean your sensor. If you do not know how, you may consider taking it to a local shop for cleaning. When doing a wet clean, you are actually touching the sensor with a cleaning swab, so you can damage the sensor pretty easily if you aren't careful. But like I said, even if you do get your sensor professionally cleaned, you will quite possibly still see some dust in your photo. You can embrace it, or if you don't like it, you can often fix it in post-processing. If you've been watching my channel for any length of time, you know that I love Lens Baby. I purchased the first Lens Baby, wow, well over a decade ago. <laughs> and I've been delighted to have worked with them a few times in the past few years on their newer offerings. I have loved every single thing that I've used. It's no surprise that I dig the Obscura. This lens is challenging and refreshing and interesting and it's fun. It tells me to throw away what I'm used to doing and what I'm used to seeing in photography and be different. Obviously it's not for everyone. If, if you get it, you get it. If you don't, that's fine. <laughs> lens Baby does actually have some lenses that are more traditional or at least more traditional with a quirk or two, but 
a part of my work is to be consistently creative. And one of the things that I do to keep the creative fire alive is to use different gear. Be that simply a different brand than I'm used to, or to use a prime lens instead of a zoom lens, or to experiment with offbeat gear and techniques. Lens Baby's lenses consistently help me do that because they, they throw me a curveball, so to speak. When I first pulled this lens out of the box, I was super intimidated, but the more I used it, the more excited I got about it. It's just another way for me to play with light. I have a few ideas for this lens that I have not tried yet. I want to explore abstraction with it some more. And actually I'm kind of interested in the 50 millimeter optic for the optic swap system. I have the Composer Pro 2 for my Nikon Z mount camera, along with a couple of optics in the system. My thought is that the 50 millimeter Obscura optic when used in APS-C mode gets you to an effective field of view of 75 millimeters. And that can be super interesting for some quasi portraits. <laughs> anyway, Lens Baby has obviously caught my attention and my imagination with the Obscura, but what about you? What do you think? Are you on the Lens Baby bandwagon already? Is this newest baby gonna end up on your camera? And what are your ideas for it? And is there anything that you think that I should try with it? Let me know in the comments. And on your way down there, please give this video a like and subscribe if you haven't already. I will also add a link in the description of this video to this as soon as it's available. And that way you'll be able to check the pricing and the availability in your area. Thank you to Lens Baby for sending this lens and for continuing to fuel my creativity. <laughs> And thank you for watching.